To fight against the use of chemicals and the invasion of genetically modified foods, Dr. Shiva created Navdanya, which is both an organic farm located in the Dehradun Valley at the foot of the Himalayas, as well as a movement to bring together farmers and sympathizers from all over India. At Navdanya, agricultural workers receive advice on organic farming and its benefits. Chemical analysis of their land shows them that the use of chemicals leads to soil salinization. The differences between industrial agriculture and organic farming are many. When you look at an organic field, the first thing that you notice is that it is normally planted with different species. Some serve as natural pesticides for the others. Moreover, monoculture leads to soil exhaustion and a loss of native species. In an organic field, there are a large number of insects. Traditionally, farmers have noted the difference between insects which are the enemies of farming and those which are a farmer's friends. The earthworm is a perfect example of a friendly creature. They are primarily responsible for keeping the ground moist longer, as their winding movements aerate the earth and allow the water to reach all parts of it. Land with earthworms needs less water. Bees exchange pollination for honey, while spiders and ladybugs are excellent organic pesticides. They only eat the insects that attack plants. In contrast, chemical pesticides cannot tell friends from enemies and so kill all insects indiscriminately. In addition, on an organic farm the earth is darker, indicating that it is hydrated and that the moisture is being retained. When chemicals are used, the color is more grayish, the earth is drier. Prolonged use of chemical fertilizers causes soil salinization. Less hydration and more salt add up to a result with little room for optimism, a greater need for water. Dr. Shiva denounces the interests of large food industry corporations in implementing the use of genetically modified foods, sterile seeds that drive many Indian farmers to suicide as they are forced to buy more seeds with no money and are left with no possibility to continue planting. What is more, these large corporations seek to patent the seeds, an omnipotent desire to patent life itself. To protect our biodiversity from these corporations, Dr. Shiva puts together reports for the Indian government and mobilizes the country's farmers to demonstrate against this. Also, to facilitate farmers' access to seeds, at Navdanya they have created a seed bank which contains, among other things, more than 250 varieties of basmati rice. Their flagship is the Navdanya farm, fully organic and a magnificent example of productivity which respects the environment. Navdanya is also a movement with more than 60,000 agricultural worker members. The only reason GM food has spread is because it was spread by destroying the democratic rights of citizens. Um, in, in food, we are in the ultimate context between freedom of people and the freedom of corporations. The lies they tell are number one, that chemicals are necessary to do farming. We sit here on a farm, we produce more than all the farmers who use chemicals. We have high yields. You do not know chemicals. You need. You not need chemicals to produce more. Chemicals produce more toxics. Chemicals do not produce more food. The second lie they tell you is they're doing this for hunger. No, they're doing it for their profits. It's a hunger for profits, not the hunger for food. The third lie they tell you is that through this there will be prosperity and peace. After more than 30 years of green revolution, not only has hunger not disappeared from the face of the earth, but the gap between the rich and the poor has grown. Dr. Shiva believes there is enough pie for everyone to have a slice. The problem is, first, that distribution is unequal, and second, that the pie has been poisoned. The Western lifestyle is basically a lifestyle that is based on an illusion of plenty but the reality of creation of scarcity. I know, for example, colleagues have written books about the overworked American. Now, the overworked American is not having a higher quality of life than a woman in the Himalaya. 
I don't think the needs of Western communities are bigger than the needs of any third world person. You cannot eat more than a certain amount. There's that much calories you can eat. The Americans are being taught to eat a little more but they're eating also the wrong things as a result of which the American teenager is malnourished and they are that fat with the epidemic of obesity that has hit 70% of America. It is not the case that the obese American teenager wanted to be a glutton stealing food from the Ethiopian child or the American child. The gluttony is on the part of agribusiness which steals from the Ethiopian child and the Indian child on the one hand and creates ill health for the Western consumer on the other. I think anyone, anywhere in the world today can begin with a very simple step in the most basic need. Our most basic need is food. And anyone, anywhere can just stop today and say, where is the low closest organic farm to me? To a local source of food, as local as they can make it, is the first step. And if each of us decides to do it, we already have saved the planet and we have saved our own health. Dr. Shiva's work has been recognized with awards such as the so-called Alternative Nobel Prize, the Right Livelihood Award, but she has also won many enemies and the nickname of Green Murderer. Since their green revolution is about selling GMOs and selling chemicals, when they see me as a green killer, they see me as a killer of their profits and their deceitful markets. And it's all right. I feel like Shakti and Kali. I feel I'm, uh, I was, like every woman on this planet, we are meant to kill the demons. I'm quite happy to get rid of the toxics. I'm quite happy to kill the pseudo-green revolution, which is not green. Because to me, being a woman means A, having solidarity with all life, and B, fighting with your blood for the defense of that life. My name is uh, Sami. I am Christina Sami. I'm called Christy. I'm in 73, 74. Uh, we knew each other. Both of us were looking for really working in the rural areas with the people. At 81, we decided to get married. Married in this village. Dalits are the most oppressed, exploited people in Indian society. Uh, in the whole caste system, in the whole hierarchy of uh, caste, Dalits are in the lowermost not even lowermost, they are the untouchables and they don't have a place even in the system. We have distinctly 3,700 caste which will not interdine and intermarry. So within these 3,700 caste, Dalit are the majority and all of them are poor. Majority, at least 99% are poor. Dalit people could not walk in the uh, village, the main village where the other caste people are there. Even if they happen to walk, they should not wear chapels. In a village, you have the uh, Dalit uh, residence area, which is called the colony, and uh, the rest of the village, which is uh, called the, the village. And the Dalit uh, villages would not have any access for uh, civil needs like water, sanitation, road, electricity, housing. Sometimes as a punishment they are making this kind of a thing and that you should drink the urine or you know, the feces. This is to say that you are not even considered a human being, not only human being but an animal or whatever it is. If this is a situation for men, for women, you can imagine. The women cannot own their own bodies, Dalit women, which means there are lots of instances throughout the uh, country where Dalit women have been uh, raped, where nobody can question. And in many places, uh, Dalit women being taken for, uh, to bed with 
has been even not questioned. The higher caste men would, it's like a license for them. It's like because these uh, Dalit uh, men and women are depending on them for their wages. But the woman would agree to it because uh, she could not resist it. She has to depend on him for the next day's work. And the men, even if the husband knows about it, he has to be silent because he has to go to his farm for the next day for work. You know, they understood the whole uh, reality and the whole experience of exploitation and oppression uh, as their fate. Because I am born in this uh, uh, community as Dalits uh, and Dalit women, I should go through this.